was running through the six with my woes. And you know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. Running through the. What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, Windows Phone. Good times, good times. So, build has passed and there's been some very interesting news on Windows Phone. It's now called Windows Mobile, so I will be referring to it as Windows Mobile going forward. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it is what it is. So, I want to start with Continuum. Continuum is a feature that first we saw in January, and it was pretty much the name Microsoft called the awareness of the OS and the platform it's on. So for instance, if you take something like a Surface, a Surface Pro 3, and uh, running Windows 10, you hit the start button when the keyboard's connected, you get the menu in the lower left. And you remove the keyboard, hit the start button, you get a full screen, a full screen start menu. So that ability for the operating system to know what's attached to it and what form factor you're using it on, uh, they called it Continuum. It's fine, it was good enough, and it was important when you have uh, that wide of a range of form factor devices. Now, build, uh, Continuum is almost like a completely different thing, or a game, new features, however you want to put it. Uh, the best way to explain it was is to take something like, uh, like Microsoft Word. Uh, Microsoft has done a good job at reiterating the fact that Windows is now one Windows, one code across all devices. So Windows 10 is at the core of your Xbox, your PC, your laptop, your tablet, your phone. And because of this, it can, we now have these universal apps that would, you know, the developer can make it once and it is also aware of what platform it's running on. So it adjusts the user experience and feature sets to suit. So Microsoft Word on the phone is the same word we've all been using uh, in the Windows, the Windows phone world. And even now on, you know, iOS, they've also got Office. But what Continuum is, is what Continuum is, is <laughs> Continuum allows you to, let's say you dock your phone to a, a docking station of some sort, or you, you use Miracast to, to project the phone to a TV. Continuum will recognize the fact that you are, you, you've just been given infinite times more real estate and it will adjust the user experience to suit. So all of a sudden now, your, your phone becomes a desktop. There's a start menu to search. Uh, you, there's cascaded tiled windows and it's the full version of Office. And you can, you know, you got your control, copy, paste, all your your functions, templates, and Excel, you've got your matro, your macros. It's the full version of, of, of Office, of the app. The important thing here, and I think it's super dope, is how Microsoft was able to engineer the, the universal apps in a way where they're essentially running on the phone. And it, it's the same app. <laughs> but once you then connect it to, to real estate that can take advantage, then it explodes and you get the full the full functionality. Uh, I thought that was mind blowing because now I'm looking at things like Photoshop. You know, we don't need a Photoshop Express, which gives us the entire Photoshop. And by the way, Adobe was highlighted on at the keynote, and they'll be you know they'll have their universal apps ready. So. You know that that I think is a huge a huge part of of what is what will define Windows going forward. Uh, and I, I can't help but think I think it was Motorola that made this Android phone that they sold with a shell, a laptop shell. So you had your phone, you could do as you wish, and then if you needed a full keyboard and you needed more real estate, you would plug the phone in the bottom, and it would change the UI a bit. But this never really increased or added functionality. It just gave you more uh, real estate, which is fine. But I, I like Microsoft's approach here. Now, the big, big news that everyone, uh, me personally, I'm more excited for Continuum, but the industry is in awe at Microsoft's solution for Windows Phone. 
And by, when I say solution, we all know Windows Phone has a very big problem. Uh, according to me, the only problem is apps. There's a huge app gap. And there's not a huge app gap because, uh, you know, the phones aren't selling or the, the tools are garbage. The developers just aren't interested. So what Microsoft is doing now is they're, they're making what they call bridges to to the the uh, to Android, and I think the 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 best way to wrap your head around it is they're just making it easier for developers to bring their existing code from Android over to Windows Phone. So Microsoft's been working hard at at these tools that pretty much take the code and convert it for the developer. And you know they would have to do some tweaking, not much. I, I think the Android number was about 80%. So it'll it'll get 80% of the code automatically converted, and they just gotta go in and tidy up a little bit. That's a huge deal. You know what I mean? And this was it's a very elegant way to handle the rumors we've been hearing about Microsoft allowing Android apps to run on a Windows on a Windows phone. Uh, there's also a second part of this. You can also, because Microsoft is going to include a subset of Android in the the Windows phone or Windows period. So the developers can simply not want to rewrite it. They can just take the entire APK and the APK is that one uh, app file that Android uses and port it directly to Windows phone. That That's huge. That That in itself is something I would like to see. And there's some technical details behind it, uh, and I'll, I'll after this next piece, then I'll tie that back in. Uh, it wasn't only Android; it was also iOS. So they did the same thing for iOS. Uh, I thought that was very interesting because when that conversation is had of how to solve the app gap, and you arrive at let's just let developers port their apps, let's make it easy for them to do so. Now the next logical conversation to have is. What do we choose? Which platform? iOS and Android. Fuck it. They'll do both. I like it. So the iOS world, uh, they they don't get that treatment where they can take that one finished app and port and push to the, to the market or the store. But their code, because it's so similar to what Microsoft uses, uh, what is it? Uh, Apple, Apple uses Objective-C. We use C-sharp. So, because it's so close together, they can get it about 90% of the way, and the developers can then, you know, go in and, and tidy up. Also dope. And I, I think the important thing here is to know that Microsoft is very cognizant of what's been going on. Even with something like uh, like the APIs with, with uh, Siri or Google Now, you know, their, their tool is written in such a way that it recognizes these APIs and then it converts them in over to Cortana APIs. And he's sort of like, whoa. So if you had an app that you hit, you would hit a button and it would it would trigger a, a search with Google Now or, or Siri, it would now do it with Cortana. Wow, that is such an ingenious way to do that. But the technical, the technical aspects of it uh, get really complex really quick a lot of which i'm still trying to wrap my head around now the universal app thing is very real and i think this is microsoft's promise and allure to the developers as to why they should bring these apps over is because they won't only be for the phone you know these apps will work on the phone the tablet the pc the xbox and and did i leave one out so much. So there's a lot of exposure here for these developers to make that money that they're looking for. And uh, the the Android the Android APK porting will not support universal apps. It would not be a universal app. It'll only run on the phone. If they were to rewrite the code, then it'll be a universal app. iOS, the iOS method of porting the apps, that'll be universal as well. So there's a conversation for somebody like, I don't know, Instagram. Instagram says, all right, cool. Microsoft's got it together. Let's push it out. Which version do we use? Use the iOS version. It's easier to push and it'll be universal. So you can get it on your Xbox, your laptop, your PC, and your phone. Why not? So I, I think that was a very a, a dope way of, of approaching how to handle the app gap. 
Now, the questions still remain, right? The, the Windows Phone loyalists are a bit worried. What does this do for the experience? Because when Windows Phone was brought about, the experience was not only OS deep, it was all about the apps. The apps were supposed to be made a certain way with that panoramic view. And because everything was so similar, I knew how to work Twitter from the time I installed it. I knew how to work Facebook, uh, you know, six tag. These apps all work the same way because they were developed in the same SDK. They were developed the same way. There was a, a uniform to them, so to speak. So not only was the OS developed that way, the app had a very likens, uh, likening to the OS and the experience as a whole was very solid. When you start to port these Android and iOS apps, which at times can be beautiful, but I find a very, uh, very often not coherent, uh, it's 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 gonna be a little scary. And for those of us who've been you know who've been cherishing Windows Phone for a long time, we're we're worried. Like, okay, what's the experience gonna be like? So we're trading. We're 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 here trading off the functionality. I'm sorry, we're trading the experience for the uh, popularity of the OS to allow it to grow. Uh, it, it's it's interesting stuff. Uh, but me personally, I think Continuum is is one of the big deals. I'm very I'm very excited to see how Continuum works out in the real world and the different use cases for it on your phone. You know, uh, especially with the Outlook. Uh, I'm wondering, like, can you can will it support the the PSTs, the archive files now? Being that it's the full version of of Outlook, like that's going to be so dope to me. I really want to see how that works out. But Microsoft, especially with uh, with the leaks, uh, the this, the rumored specs of the next two upcoming Nokia flagship, Microsoft is looking uh, looking rock solid as ever. And I like how the Windows 10 bills coming together and the phone is coming together. So I'm going to be doing a lot more videos and a lot more of those Windows 10 features. Check out the video posted earlier about the the specs for the new Nokia's coming out. Uh, those are looking pretty good. So yeah, it was an exciting build, man. Uh, Microsoft is, is doing the damn thing. It's your boy Ramon. I'm out of here. Peace. What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon here. Thank you for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take a second to like it. Take a second to leave a comment below. Let us know you liked it. Join the conversation. And then please, if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Why not? We got tons more content coming out. Don't forget to check the website. And don't forget to check out Ignorant Gamers. For all the gaming in you, we got it covered. I'm out of here. Peace.